Hi everybody, my name is Chelsea and today we are going to be having some kind of hard conversations. So this might be a good video that you want to watch with your parents this time. We'll be reading two books and we're also going to be doing a meditation. Our first book is called Let's Talk About Race and we are going to have um, another book that's called Say Something. Now, there has been a lot going on in the world since the last video that I did, and I'm really looking forward to sharing these books with you today. Maybe in this last week or so, your parents or your family have been talking about um, going to protests. You might have heard uh, people say the words Black Lives Matter, and maybe you've noticed adults getting sad. Maybe you've noticed adults getting mad. And maybe you felt some of these emotions too. Maybe your parents have talked to you about some of these things that are going on already. Today, we're going uh, to read this book called Let's Talk About Race, and we're gonna learn a bit more about our similarities and our differences with other people. So let's go ahead and get started. This book is called Let's Talk About Race by Julius Lester. And this book, um, for parents, just so you know, uh, it was found as a resource on the Black Lives UU page. Um, there is a specific Unitarian Universalist Black Lives Matter uh, group, and this was recommended uh, as a book to read with the um, white supremacy teaching that we did um, earlier this year and, and last year also, I believe. So, um, Let's get started with the book. I am a story, and so are you. So is everyone. My story begins the same way yours does. I was born on, take me for example, I was born on January 27th, 1939 in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm kind of old, huh? How does your story begin? Many people and many events are part of my story and yours too the names of our parents and where they were born, whether or not we have brothers and or sisters. I had a brother who was nine years older than me, but he is dead. What kind of work our parents do or did, my father was a minister, my mother was a housewife. My story and yours have many elements such as, my favorite food, mine is fish, hobbies. I like to do crossword puzzles, take photographs and cook, Favorite color, red or maybe green, but I like orange and purple too. I think my favorite color is mm, all of them. Religion, I'm Jewish. Nationality, I'm from the United States. Favorite time of day, night. Oh, there's something else that is part of my story. It's part of yours too. That's what race we are. I'm black. What race are you? Just as I am a story and you are a story and countries tell stories about themselves, race is a story too. Whether you're black like me or Asian, Hispanic or white, each race has a story about itself. And that story is almost always the same. My race is better than your race. Hmm. Some stories are true, some are not. Those who say my race is better than your race are telling a story that is not true. Why would some people say their race is better than another? Because they feel bad about themselves. Because they are afraid. Because, because there are other ways all of us, even me, even you, think we are better than others. I'm better than you because I live in, hmm. I'm better than you because I go to the school. I'm better than you because I'm a boy. I'm better than you because I'm a girl. I'm better than you because my dad, mom, makes more money than your dad or mom. I'm better than you because I'm white. I'm better than you because I'm black. I'm better than you because I'm Hispanic. I'm better than you because I'm Asian. But None of these stories are true, are they? No, they're not. I want to tell a true story because I need your help. Here's what I want to do. 
Take your fingers and press them softly against your skin right below your eyes. Be careful, you don't poke yourself in the eye. Okay, now press gently until you feel the hard bone right beneath the surface. Now, if your mom, dad, brother, sister, or friend is close by, ask them if you can touch them. If they say okay, and it's important that they say okay, um, take your fingers and press softly at the same place beneath their eyes. Press gently until you feel the hard bones right beneath the skin. Now, press someplace else on your body, maybe on your arm, your chest, your head. Press anywhere until you feel the hard bones beneath your skin. Beneath everyone's skin are the same hard bones. If you were to go outside without your skin on and without your hair on your head, turn the page and see what you would look like. But you wanna know something? If I went outside without my skin, my mustache and the hair on my head, what little I have left, I would look just like you and you would look just like me. Suppose, just suppose one day we, I mean everyone in the whole world, decided to take off all our clothes and all our skin and all our hair, then we would do what we do normally every day. Go to school, go to work, play and shop, everything would be normal except we would look at each other and couldn't tell who was a man, who was a woman, who was white, black, Hispanic or Asian. Everybody would look like a skeleton, right? So which story should we believe? The one that says my race is better than yours or the one we just discovered for ourselves that beneath our skin, I look like you and you look like me. And she looks like her and him and he looks like him and her and we look like them and they look like us. When I look at you, which story do I see? Do I see only the color of your skin, the shape of your eyes, the texture of your hair? Do I look at you and think I know your story when I don't even know your name? Or do I look at you and wonder what's your name? When were you born? Where were you born? Where do you live? What do you like? What don't you like? Gee, maybe if we like and dislike some of the same things. Your race is not all that you are. My race is not all that I am. Yes, I am black, but I am also a man. I am of medium height. I have a deep voice and a loud laugh. I love to laugh, do you? I live in a big house in the woods in a small town. I like pancakes and macaroni and cheese and, and, and. I am so, so, so many things besides my race. To know my story, you have to put together everything I am. Like, I bet you didn't know that I have asthma. That's something where it's hard for you to breathe sometimes. Beneath the skin, we all look alike, you and me. I'll take off my skin. Will you take off yours? So recently, but also a lot throughout history, people who have black skin, like the person who wrote that book, have been treated unfairly and that is not okay just because of how they look, just because of the color of their skin. As Unitarian Universalists, like we are in the church that we go to, what we believe, our very first principle, what Unitarian Universalists believe, is that we believe every person deserves respect and every person has dignity. We believe that we should be kind to everybody, no matter what you look like. And right now, black people are working very hard to be treated kindly and with the respect that they deserve. This is why you might have heard the words, black lives matter. 
So what can a person do if they think that someone is not being treated well? Should you just sit and do absolutely nothing? You just sit there? Oh, that's too bad. Mm. No. You should not just sit there. You should say something. So that is our next book. This book is called Say Something by Peter Reynolds. The world needs your voice. Mine? Yes, yours. Go ahead. It doesn't need to be perfect as long as it's from your heart. And that's what I'm trying to do today. It's not perfect, but it's from my heart. And in fact, I'm trying really hard not to cry as I'm teaching you this lesson because this is kind of hard for me. You don't have to be loud. Powerful words can be a whisper. You can say something in so many ways, with words, with action, with creativity. If you see someone lonely, say something by just being there for them. If you see an empty canvas, say something with your brush. If you see an empty lot, say something by planting a seed and watching it bloom. If you see someone being hurt, say something by being brave. Hey, stop. And that's what a lot of people are talking about right now, where they saw somebody getting hurt and now they're saying, that's not okay. They're being brave by saying, this needs to stop. If you see something beautiful, say something with a poem. If you have a brilliant idea, say something with confidence. This person says, Eureka! If you want to show the world who you are, say something with style. Ta-da! If you are angry, right now a lot of people are angry. Say something to help people understand. You made me feel invisible and that really hurt. This person says, I'm really sorry. If you see an injustice, injustice means something that you think is not right. Say something peacefully. And this sign says, no more hurting people. It's what a lot of people are saying right now too. And the word peace, we believe that there should be peace. But sometimes, sometimes people get really, really angry when there's not peace and really sad. Inspire others to do the same. Now all these people have different signs. They say peace in different languages. This one says make more light. Sometimes you'll say something, no one will be listening, but keep saying what is in your heart and you will find someone who listens. Keep saying it and you may be surprised to find the whole world listening. If you are grateful for being alive, quietly say something to the stars, to the universe. Some people find it easier to say something than others. This person says, I hope. This person says, I believe. I wish. Together we can. Join us. I'm ready to change the world. I imagine. This person has a sign that says, every voice matters. This person's shirt says, I persist. This person's shirt says, I have a dream. This person's shirt says, be the change. But everyone has something to say. So, when you're ready, say something.
Your voice can inspire, heal, and transform. Your voice can change the world. Are you ready to say something? And that's the end of our story. Sometimes we don't know what to say. I've been feeling that way recently because I've been feeling so angry and so sad. My emotions are getting all mixed up and my head is getting all fuzzy and foggy. And at times I just haven't known what to say. Sometimes we feel helpless. And so now I'm going to walk you through a meditation because sometimes if we don't know what to say out loud, we can think about what we can say in our own minds so that our minds and our bodies can be at peace. And then maybe when we feel more at peace and more calmed down and more focused, then we can think about what we say out loud or what we can do with our actions, with our hands or with our words. So let's get ready for our meditation now, okay? Let's settle in and either lay down or find a comfortable seat and close your eyes. We're gonna listen to our bell and then I'll start our meditation, okay? Think of someone you love and imagine that person is standing in front of you. Think of something really nice that you could say to that person and say it now just quietly in your mind. Now think of a different person, someone you don't know well or maybe someone who's having a hard time right now. Maybe someone who's not being treated fairly. Maybe someone who is not getting the kindness that they deserve. Imagine that person is standing in front of you and think of something really nice that you could say to that person. Say it quietly in your mind. Now think of a group of people, maybe people who are being treated unfairly. Let's send them lots of love and kindness with our minds and with our hearts. Maybe think of something that you might say to that whole group of people about how they are loved and about how you care about them and you wish that they were being treated better. Just think of that quietly in your mind. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And you can send some kindness to yourself too. And think of yourself and something really nice you can say to yourself today like that you did a really good job listening. You did a really great job doing something. Maybe you helped clean your room. Maybe you were really kind to your pet. You can thank yourself for that kindness too. And take a great big breath in again. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. You can repeat these words for yourself and then for other people. May I be at peace. May I receive love. 
May I receive kindness. You can say this for other people too. May you be at peace. May you receive love. May you receive kindness. Take another great big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm gonna do two more in through your nose, out through your mouth. One last one. I'm gonna ring our bell, wait for the sound to end. Wiggle your toes, come back to the space, open your eyes. And that is the end of our time together today. So thank you for joining me. It hasn't been the easiest past week or so. I'm thinking about you and I'm sending my love to you. Please, please, please take care of yourselves. Thank you for joining me today.